Hello data fam, I'm Nista and welcome back to the part 9 of our SQL series for beginners. In, in today's video, we are going to talk about subqueries. So subqueries are the queries that live inside other queries. And by the end of this session, you'll know that what a subquery is, what are the major types of subqueries and we'll cover each of the subquery using excellent examples. So let's begin with understanding what a subquery is. A subquery in SQL is a query nested inside another query. In simple words, we can say that it is a way to use the result of one query as input for the an another query. So the, an so the inner query, which is the subquery, runs first and its result is used by the outer query. Let's understand this with the help of an excellent example. Let's say you have a product table having three columns, product ID, respective product name and the price of the product. Now you want to find all the products cheaper than the average price. So how do you do it with the subquery? Let's see that. So this is the query that you'll be writing. Now, now let's understand what's happening over here. So the query which is highlighted in yellow is the inner query that we wrote to return the average price of the product. Okay. Now this query will actually return the average, average price of the product. Now we are writing the outer query where, where we are just making use of less than operator to compare the price of each of the product with the average of the price that we'll get from the inner query. Okay. So the outer query will actually filter and return all the products which are cheaper than the average price of the product. So that's how that's how we can write a subquery. This was just an example. If you if you didn't get understand uh, how we we went through writing the subquery, please it's uh, don't need to worry. We'll cover more examples in future. Let's now see why do we use subqueries. So subqueries are mainly used to filter data based on dynamic values like averages, totals, ma maximums, minimums, and all those. Next, they are also used to compare across rows or tables without writing multiple queries. And the third one is subqueries are mostly used to simplify complex logic by breaking them down into smaller steps. So that's why we use subqueries. Let's now move on to the top five subquery rules that you must know while before writing a subquery. So the rule number one is subquery must be enclosed within parentheses. For example, your subquery would, should look something like this. The rule number two says that subquery in SQL always runs first followed by the main query. So whenever you're writing a subquery which is enclosed in the parenthesis, that is going to be done first and its output is actually used by the main query. That means inner query run first, the subquery runs first then, and then the outer query runs secondly. The third rule is that some systems like MySQL restrict order by in subqueries and therefore you can use group by instead if needed. So subquery uh, in, in some of the systems, like in some of the databases, my, MySQL racks restrict order by in subqueries. The next rule is if a subquery returns more than one row, you must use operators like in, any or all and avoid using is equal to operator with subqueries that return multiple rows. The last and the final rule is that you cannot use between within a SQL query, although it can be used with a main query. So these are the top five subquery rules that you must know before writing a subquery. Let's now deep dive into the types of subqueries in SQL. So subqueries come in different forms depending on where they are used and how they behave. So the types of subqueries are number one is the scalar subquery. Number two is a correlated subquery and number three is the nested subquery. Now nested subqueries are further categorized by where the subquery actually appears. So they are categorized into further three types. The number one is the subquery, subquery return in where clause. Number two, subquery return in the select clause. And number three, subquery return in from clause. Let's understand each of these subquery types uh, using the example over here. So the number one is scalar subquery. So a scalar subquery is a subquery that returns exactly one value that is a single row and a single column. So it is typically used in a where clause inside the select list or within a case expression. Okay. Now let's now here you just need to find the employee having the maximum salary of all the employees. So here you are given the employees employee details having four columns employee ID employee name respective department of the employee and the respective salary of that particular employee. Now your query would look something like this that we have written. So here what we are doing is here we are simply writing uh, since since we need to find the employees having the maximum salary of the of all the employees. So here, while writing the query, we'll write a subquery in the where clause. 
uh, showing that salary should be equal to the maximum of the salary okay so here the subquery calculation is so so the query which is highlighted in yellow over here so this query actually calculates the maximum of the salary so what it will give me is it will give me the maximum salary which is which is present here uh, across all the employees okay now what i what i actually want to find i want to find the details of that employee which is which is having the highest salary okay so here i'm simply uh, comparing my salary should be equal to maximum of the salary and this inner query will give me the maximum salary that's why we can we can actually make use of sub queries uh, uh, uh to when dealing with such such types of uh, problem statements so your output would look something like this that that is it is showing the details of the employee uh 205 and the uh, with the name tanvi having the salary of 80000 now the question is why where why do we use uh, a scalar subquery when you want to compare each row to an aggregate be benchmark and that's where you make use of scalar subquery that is uh, because scalar subquery what it does is it actually fetches a single value to use across multiple rows it actually gives you the single value so here the output of this scalar subquery would, would be 80,000 that is the maximum of the salary and that's where we are actually making use of uh, in our outer query to compare my salary with the maximum of the salary because I simply want to compute the maximum sal salary of, of the employee details of that employee that is actually having the maximum salary. So this is your scalar subquery which is highlighted in yellow. Okay so now the second type of subquery is your correlated subquery. A correlated subquery is a subquery that actually depends on the outer query of its value. So it is evaluated once per row of the outer query and references a column from the outer query. Outer query. So here uh, what it does is the characteristics of a correlated subquery are that uh, that it actually follows a row by row evaluation that is the subquery is executed once for each row in the outer query. The second thing you must keep in mind is it is dynamic independent that means the inner query uses values from the outer query that that makes it dependent on the outer query. And the third point that you must know that it is actually used for complex filtering. That means correlated subqueries are commonly used for row specific filtering, row specific filtering, row by row evaluation. So this is something these are the words, keywords that you must that that must be clicked when when we are talking about correlated subquery, correlated subquery. That means row by row evaluation or row specific filtering, ranking or calculations based on other related data. So it actually provides you row specific filtering. So this is kind of complex filtering uh, where correlated subqueries are used. Okay. Let's understand the correlated subquery with the help of an example again over here. So here you just need to find students whose GPA is higher than the average GPA of their own department. You have been given the details of the students. So this is the students table that you have having four columns, student ID, respective name of the student, department of the student and the GPA that, that the student has. Okay. Now, since you need to find the students whose GPA is higher than the average GPA of their own department. So your your final query would look something like this so here what you are doing is you will first compute the average gpa of the department average gpa of each department then finally you you will compare it uh, you will filter it using the where clause that your gpa should be actually greater than the average gpa of the department of each department okay so a subquery references s dot department from the outer query and for every student it calculates the average gpa of the department and then it compares it so basically s is the alias for the outer query and uh, outer query that means the student we are checking okay the subquery which is highlighted in yellow it computes the average gpa average gpa for the same department as the current student in the outer query okay so this is like a classic classic example of a correlated query where the subquery depends on a column which is the s dot department column from the outer query now what why we have used it is uh, here because it actually follows the row by row uh, comparisons within groups and it uses when the subquery needs uh, needs context from the outer row okay so there is one important thing that you must note that is a, a correlated subquery executes once for every row in the outer query it, it's like it's running a loop okay 
but the thing is it can kill performance on large data set so that's why the one optimization tip is that you must convert correlated queries into joins or window functions wherever possible because correlated subqueries uh, actually kill the performance of the large data sets let's now move on to our third type of subqueries which is nested subqueries so nested subqueries are the queries which are placed inside another query typically within the where clause select clause or from clauses and they help break down complex problems by allowing you to use the result of one query as input to another and these subqueries can return single values either scalar multiple rows or even entire tables depend depending on the context so actually this makes it dynamic as it can return different results results for each row depending on the values of the outer query now they are further categorized by where the subquery actually appears into three types one subquery in the where clause second subquery in the select clause and third subquery in the for, in the from clause so let's understand each of these again with the help of example so the part one subquery in the where clause so let's let's take an example where you just need to get all the customers who live in a city where at least one supplier is located so your subquery would look something like this so here what we have done is we have we have made use of the in operator so here what why in in operator will understand it first of all let's understand the inner query that it gives it actually gives me the inner query gets us a list of unique cities where suppliers are located okay and since we just need to f uh, get details of the customers who live in a city where at least one supplier is located okay so the outer query will actually find all the customers who live in those cities and since cities will be uh, will be more than one that's why we made use of in operator so that it will consider more than one cities okay so so uh, the thing is uh, I would say that this is super useful when you want to match data across two different tables. So for example, if you are, ta are targeting customers and locations where your supply chain is already strong, so this is the query you would use. Now there is one important th thing that you must uh, make, you must know that you can use in operator or even the exist operator when working with list in subqueries under the where clause. So here, what you will uh, so so here when while running this uh, inner query, what you'll get is you'll get the list of the cities, list of the cities uh, from your suppliers table. Okay. So here's uh, the the cities could be main, many cities like it could be three, four, five, six or so many. Okay. And you just want to get the details of the customers. Okay. Or the names of the customers. So here what you're simply retrieving the names of the customers from the table name that you have you you are writing over here and where where you have just simply provided that city should be in this okay so that that's how your you can write a subquery in the where clause so here you have written the subquery in the where clause that's why it it comes under the city uh, subquery in the where clause so although i have not uh, made use of input table and the output table over here it, it it might be difficult for you to understand but uh, I just want to make you understand that how to write a subquery in the where clause. No need to get into the deep concept of the subquery. How is it written? Because it's difficult for you to understand if the input table, the output table is not given. Okay. So yeah, let's now move on to the second one, which is the subquery in the select clause. So that you will. So I'm just giving you the, these examples so that it's easier for you to uh to uh you know just differentiate that this is actually the subquery in the select clause, this is subquery in the from clause, and this is subquery in the where clause. So what so the uh so here taken let's take the uh example of the subquery in the select clause. So here you just need to get the list of all departments along with how many employees they have. So here the subquery would look something like this. So here this is the exam perfect example of a subquery written in the select clause. Okay. So here you can see that in this in the select clause only after after a comma, after retrieving one column and then applying a comma, we have written a subquery. Okay. So this will actually give me the head count and here for every department in the departments table, we are calculating how many employees belong to that department. So basically uh, so basically what subquery is giving me the query which is highlighted in yellow over here is my subquery so this subquery runs once per row in the outer query so each row in the final output will will have department name and the number of employees which are nothing but the head count okay 
so here in this key in this case we will use this kind of subquery when when we just need to attach a metric or a calculated field to each row okay so there is one important thing that you must uh, keep in mind is that uh, sub these these are sometimes called correlated queries because they reference columns from the outer query now the third type of subquery was subquery in the from clause so here let's take uh, another example where you just need to get monthly active users from a login table login table and this is the subquery that you will be writing so this is the perfect example of a subquery in the from clause so here you can see that you have you have written select month comma active customers so these are the columns that you have to retrieve and in the from clause you have created a subquery which will actually uh, which will actually uh, behave as a temporary table over here so this is like a temporary table that you have actually created uh, by, by, by writing a subquery. So monthly states is your table alias and here you are simply writing uh, order by month. So what you, what you have done here is, so this like this like a more advanced, uh, more advanced uh, types of subqueries. So inside the from clause, you have created a temporary temporary table. So what this will do is uh, this temporary table or this subquery, it will actually give you, it, it will actually calculate the active users per per month. And then in the outer query, this we are what we are doing is we are simply selecting or extracting our data. Uh, our data that is that is the uh, active customers, which is the new column that you have introduced over here in the subquery. We are simply extracting this new column month comma active users from this particular data. Okay, so this actually calculates the active users per month and here in the outer query, we simply select and order that data. So we treat the subquery like a normal table, normal table uh, that we have actually derived it. So this is perfect when you need to build intermediate steps like aggregations and then query them further all in one go. So that's where it is used. And again, one thing to note that is always give your subquery an alias that is important otherwise it won't run okay so that let's do a quick recap when to use with subquery so subquery in a where clause is used when you want to filter rows using values from another table then subquery in select clause is used when you want to add calculated data per per row like counts or averages next subquery in from clause are used when you need to create a temporary table for further querying or filtering okay if table Okay, so yeah, that's all about the types of subqueries that we have. How to write a subquery in where clause, how to write a subquery in select clause and how to write a subquery in from clause like that. So that's all for this video guys. Let's meet in the next video. Thank you and see you soon. Bye-bye.